Hey, good morning, everybody. Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. We're going to dive right into the vlog today because we've got the second round of strong storms today. Again, nothing like Tuesday. And in many cases, a lot of us will miss out on the severe weather risk, but there is still that risk. And I'll show you the system beginning to develop quite, quite uh, well to our west, you know, for severe weather wise. That's a pretty potent system. I'm going to turn some of the warnings on just so you can see. Uh, what's going on to our west. I'll pause it here. You can see this line does have a tornado watch associated with it and a couple tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings. And yes, those are all cloud to ground lightning strikes currently. Let's look at the day one severe weather outlook. You can see what's going to be heading our way as we go into the afternoon. We'll turn that wa uh, area on. You see the higher risk back where the tornado watch is, but once you get into Carolinas, <coughs> excuse me, no choked up there. Um, you can see that the risk is low to medium for most of our area. And the real, the biggest concern, honestly, is going to be these areas right in here. Um, the further north and west you go, you're going to be kind of wedged in with cold air. And today's a day where cold air is our friend. In fact, I'm going to turn the temperatures on right now, and we'll show you temperatures over our area are nice and chilly this morning. So the longer those hold on, the better. That warm air surges up from the south. That's when we get into trouble. So let's get to the future cast right away. So here we are, future cast, 9 a.m. You can see the system slowly pushing east. I'll stop this around noon. So through the first half of the day, no issues at all. Um, really kind of that cold air winning out. But as we get into the afternoon, you start to see the moisture move in. Now, this is the big million dollar question for us as a meteorologist is where are we going to see that warm air surge? Because somewhere in here, there's going to be a warm front that's going to be drifting north. And if you want to kind of monitor how this goes without looking at some of the atmospheric parameters, Look at the temperature. If the temperature starts getting close to 60 where you are, then that's an area where of greatest concern. So by four o'clock, I expect we'll be in the rain. There'll be rain here. Now, the area where the warm front is will be key because it'll be just regular rain, no issues. But where the warm front is in south, we call that the warm sector, that's where we possibly would have some severe weather risk. And I think right now, just looking at the way this sets up, it's somewhere in here. Okay, this looks okay up in here. These could be supercells, which you got to watch. And then the main line here. So there's two waves, one and two of severe weather risk. So the first one, four, five, six o'clock. And then the main line, which you know doesn't look impressive. It looks like a little skinny line, but it could have some really strong winds as well as some, you know, rotating storms. And when you look at that, look at the shape of these. See how they're all kind of like these kidney bean shaped things. Uh, that's an indication of straight line winds and possible rotation in that line. And then it pushes to the east by 10 o'clock. By 11, it's off to the east. So let's go back to the timing here. We'll stop it right here. First waves of rain around 4 or 5 o'clock. Severe weather risk heightens around 5, 6, 7 o'clock. And then a second line moves through around 8, 9, 10 o'clock this evening. So let's get into some of the parameters real quickly. Um, I don't want to go to Google. We'll go right here to the, the tornado parameter. And again, let me move this up just a hair so you could see this. You can see this is the significant tornado parameter. So we'll go into the afternoon. This is 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 o'clock. So it looks like the line is the one that is really pulling up some of these, um, some of the fuel. And right there, you can see some of these. Not that bad, really just down towards the PD region and the Grand Strand. That's the area we'll have to watch. And again, that's because we're advecting or pulling in some of that warm, humid air from the coast. Um, if, if we look at the rotation tracks, you can see there's quite a few weak ones across the area, but it kind of shows the same thing. That time frame, about five, six, seven o'clock, that main batch moves through and then the line moves through with not a lot of fan. That's not crazy. That's a little better looking than yesterday. Now, wind speeds are certainly gonna be some gusty winds. Notice most of our wind speeds here, generally gusting to about 40 to maybe 50 miles per hour. So about 10 to 15, maybe 20 miles per hour slower than on Tuesday and not all day. It's going to be mainly just with that batch of rain. So there will be strong winds. I wouldn't be shocked to see a tree or two come down and scatter power outages. Rainfall wise, much less rain than our last system. You could see uh, in the foothills and the mountains, there could be up to an inch. And that's the area to watch. The ground is so saturated. Getting an inch of rain in a short period of time could cause some quick flash flooding in a few locations. So again, we'll go back to the map here, kind of show you this system as it moves in this afternoon it really is going to be just watching the radar and the surface temperatures to see where that warm humid air gets and how far north we see the instability oh yes by the way next week i am keeping an eye on the pattern for potentially winter weather we'll start getting into that first thing maybe tonight after the storm moves through or first thing in the morning but yes next week cold and maybe some snowflake chances 
for some of us. But today, stay weather aware until this system gets out of our hair.